Yeah, I lost the button. I'm on now? Yes. I am now. Now? There you go. Yeah. Lily, where are you? Come here and help me. <laughs> no, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. It's what you do when you have grandchildren. You say, come and help me, please. Welcome this morning. So... A few announcements I wanted to go over, and we will get to some prayer concerns when we do the when we do the uh, prayer time. Uh, one thing I did want to announce this morning is that uh, I, I think I think it'd be uh, wise to uh, have Kathy, the, the secretary. I'll give her the the emails, and I've got one here, the most recent email that we have with the concern with the with with our new minister uh, or the, the the looking for the new minister is that we uh, that, that I give her these emails and that that if if you're on the uh, email or on the uh, list for uh, newsletter that that uh, you'll you'll get it but if you're not call the church office and and put your email with with uh, with Kathy and then she can and each time we get an email from the uh, mainly from the district superintendent then you, you'll see what what's going on right now uh, right right now to kind of give you a little update and I'll put this out here that you can look at it uh, but uh, he uh, the district superintendent John Groves is going to um, or is in contact with Pastor Deb about continuing right now until until we, we've found a minister or that, that he's found a minister and and uh, right now it says here that now he's extended the look to indiana and illinois to to see if we can find somebody to come here because we have asked for what the, what they call a, a less than full-time which means it would not be a full-time conference minister it would be a full-time minister, but it just wouldn't be a conference minister. So it's a little different, a little different looking uh, of, of what we go through. So, but anyway, I'll, I'll put this out there and then, like I say, I'm going to have Kathy start uh, putting these out here so that everybody will be aware of what's, uh, of what's going on with the, um, w w with the search. Um, any other announcements or concerns? Like I say, we'll get to some of the other concerns for uh, prayer time. Uh, just to give you a little update, uh, it was discovered over the weekend that, or Thursday, <laughs> well, actually the first of the week, we, we've got some water in the fellowship uh, downstairs basement, and uh, and then Thursday after the rain there, there was more water. Uh, the water has has uh, gone away, but the the carpets are wet. We got fans running on it, so uh, may have to look at. Uh, there may have to be some stuff thrown away because I know there's a roll of paper down there that that's got that much water on it. So, uh, and we may have to decide on the things. Uh, so some of those things may have to be looked at whether or not to keep or not but uh, I'll keep you informed on that too uh, the one thing I couldn't do and I don't know whether anybody has the, the Boy Scout room uh, do, 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 if anybody knows how to how to uh, get, get a hold of the, the people with the Boy Scouts uh, l l let me know after service uh, so because we couldn't get into that room uh, Friday anyway so any other announcements? We'd like to welcome our trio today too. Uh, Kevin, Pam, and Carol. They're gonna gonna have special. That's his brother. Well, you'll just have to be Kevin today. So. <laughs> All right. So if you would please stand for the call of worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The
risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. you to be seated. You won't have to stand for this next song. Um, we decided to take advantage of Kevin and Pam being here um, as some extra music today. Plus it was Alex's request because he said the sermon won't be as long. So we're going to sing. Um, so the, the other praise song that we're going to do is Heal Our Land and uh, features Kevin. Not really. Sort of.
stand for the opening prayer. O oh God, you are great. You are holy. You are glory. Let us enter today in your generous love. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You may sit. You may be seated. Before we go to our prayer concerns, or before we go to our prayer, I did want to do a prayer concerns, and the one that I that uh, is brought to my attention is uh, Shannon Belcher's uh, dad passed away this week, and uh, uh, Steve uh, Swigert, Swigert, and I do have some information uh, uh, that. Uh, the uh, visitation will be Wednesday, uh, and I've got the information that you can get from me, but it's in uh, Waseca, Illinois. Uh, but it's, it is Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. We do lift your family up in our prayers. Any other prayer concerns? Uh, are leaving this morning on their adventure. Uh, you might keep them in, in your prayers for safe travels. Okay. Anybody else? Hey, hang, hang on a minute. Let, let, let him bring the mic down. Because we, we record it. Just uh, ask for a prayer for Sheila Landis from Bloomingdale. I'm, many, many probably know her here from Rockville. Her cancer is back, and she had a brain tumor removed this week. So she's going to have a long road. Is it Lander? Landis. Landis. Almost forgot. I don't know how I did that. My cousin Steve has brain surgery. Basically, they're going to remove the tumor that's on his brain on Thursday. Uh, they do know that the cancer is dead. They just need to remove it now because it's actually causing some other problems. Um, I actually just got a text. My best friend is just now getting induced. Um, it's her first child, so she's a little nervous. So if you could keep her in your prayers. Her name is Mel. So um, just keep her in your prayers. Melody. 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 Okay. If we would, we'll go to, go to the Lord in prayer.
Your grace is more. Your grace is found. Is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. So teach my song to rise to you. Temptation comes my way, and when I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day that you've given us. And so thankful for the rain, even though we think sometimes it's too much, we know that in your plan, it's just right. We just ask that, as sinners, that we can see your grace, that we can see your salvation, that we can see your repentance. We just ask that we be guided by you and not by our wants. We do pray for the leaders of our church. We pray for a pastor to come to our church. And we just ask, Lord, that you be that guide. We do pray for the leaders of our country and our world. We just ask that all things be done through you. We lift those up in our prayer concerns today. We lift up Shannon and her family. Guy and Shelley on their travels. We lift up Sheila Landon. We lift up Martha's cousin, Steve, and Melody. We also lift those up, spoken and unspoken. Just lift them up to you, Lord. And now, Lord, we come to the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we deliver, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now the special music. This song is, um, uh, the title is Good, Good Father. Um, if you hear, listen to radio, WBGL or K-Love, this is uh, one that you'll hear a lot. It's, and it's one of our favorites.
love so I did forget to announce I think they went down. if there's any children still here, Amanda is having uh, children's church if you want to go down. I guess Charlie's the only one I see, but he's, he looks like he's busy, so it, uh, so probably, probably just keeping here. So You know, usually, usually you have the music be like 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 a a, a warm up to, to to the sermon, but uh, I, I feel like that we've already had the main part. And I'm just the warm up to them, so it, it just just in reverse order. So, thanks a lot for your for your singing. I, I uh, for me worship worship has a lot of different ways of of uh, worshiping, and music is is one of the things that I just feel really strong about. In, in the church and uh, our involvement in singing and, and then having having uh, the, the music that they bring is, is just a blessing for me to have so that's the reason I ask them to come besides they're really really good so I uh, today today my message is uh, is titled peace be with you and and kind of a little, it, it's going to be uh, John 20 is where we're going to be, and we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, I, I think about uh, the peace that we're going to be talking about is, is God's peace. And uh, being, being somebody that grew up in the, in the 60s, you know, we, 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 had a, we had a time in the 60s when, if, if you remember, I should have I should have gotten a thing for the, for the thing. You could probably find one. You remember the circle and then the, the little stick guy in the middle? I, it, I think it was something like that. But, uh, but when I was growing up, that, that was, that, that's, I mean, people had it on their, that with tie-dye shirts. They had it on their shirts and everything else. But, uh, but you, you, you saw that. But that, that at, when I was growing up, that's, that's what stood for peace. Uh, that and Richard Dixon, you know, that, uh, I mean, I mean, you, you remember that too, but uh, that was a little different thing there, but, uh, so what we're going to talk about today is a different kind of peace. Uh, the, the, the world, the world goes for world peace, but, but we're going to look at what Jesus was talking to the disciples on that day he was with them. So first let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I do remember the other, the other part of peace I remember when I was, when I was uh, thinking about this title was that when Pastor Ed was here, we, we always had a kind of a greet time before the service started and he always asked us to greet people if you remember do you remember what he asked us how to greet people it was he said may the peace of the Lord be with you and that's the way you were to greet somebody and it, it took me a while to kind of figure that out but after a while I understood and and I've used that before uh, and, and to, to me it, it, it matches how as Christians were to to, to greet somebody and to, uh, the, the other place I've used it is is uh, at, at when, when I've gone to services uh, uh, funeral services because what you want is them to have the peace of the Lord with them uh, that that's what you're asking for so so with that I, I turn to John 20 and if you want to follow along it's John 20 19 through 31 and I would like to ask, since we are reading the gospel, that you stand while I read the gospel. John 20, 19 through 31. And this, this is just uh, after the resurrection. and uh, Mary Magdalene had just told the disciples that she'd seen the Lord. And so it says, that evening on the first day of the week, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly... Jesus was standing there among them 
Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see, and he showed them his side. They were filled with joy when they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. One of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nails, the nail wounds in his hands, put my finger into them, and place my hand into the wound on his side. Eight days later, the disciples were again together. And this time, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. Then suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. And he said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas explained. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. Jesus' disciples saw him do many other miracles, miraculous signs besides the one recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life. You may be seated. So we start out on that first day that Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene outside the tomb. There was a lot of confusion and fear. Even though Jesus had told the disciples that he, Jesus, would rise again. The disciples had not believed Mary and that evening they were gathered together with the doors bolted shut. But in verse 19, John says that Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. I believe this verse can easily relate to our lives. When we bolt the door to keep the world away, just as the disciples did, and yet, and yet Jesus still can appear. And that feeling that when you hear Jesus say to us, peace be with you. I'm sure we have all been in the same boat at some time in our life. The peace that Jesus is referring to is God's peace, which is a peace that is not like world peace. The memories of Friday's crucifixion and also the disciples were scared that the same people that took Jesus would also come and take them. Even though Jesus had told them that, he was the, that, what, that what was going to happen to him, they didn't seem to believe that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Then in verse 20, he showed them his hands and his side. And then something interesting happened. After Jesus showed the disciples the nail marks on his hands and his sides where the Romans pierced him with a seer, spear, John tells us the disciples finally saw the Lord. And they were filled with joy. And then Jesus told them again, Peace be with you. Could it be that showing his wounds to the disciples, Jesus had not only showing them that it was the same person that was hanging on the cross, but also that he was now standing before them to prove in person that Jesus had overcome the very worst the world could give, that, that could do to him. Jesus overcame the worst the world and the devil could do to him. There's a song that goes, Therefore death has been swallowed up in victory. Oh, where, oh, where, oh, where, oh, death is your victory. Where, oh, death is, the, is your sting. The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so Christ can say to the disciples, peace be with you. Death is one, one of the things that people fear the most. The meaning of death and its origin that dates back to, the, to Genesis when Adam and Eve committed the original sin. Because God did not bring death to Adam and Eve at that time, but the fact remains, people fear death. There's a book written by Rudger, Rudger Kipling, The Jungle Book. 
And Mowgli, the man cub, asked the animals what, what the most feared thing in the jungle is. He's told that when two animals meet on a narrow path, that one of the animals must step aside and let the other animal pass. The animal that steps aside for no one would be the most feared. Mowgli wants to know what kind of animal that is. One tells him it's an elephant. The other one tells him it's a, the lion. Finally, the wise owl gets up and explains, the most feared thing in the jungle is death. It steps aside for no one. As people with sinful nature, we all live in the jungle. As it was back then, we still have that fear of a world of death by violence. We have terrorists blowing up and killing. We have the crazed people walking into public places, shooting people for no reason. Our anxiety level and fear are pretty high. Yet again, we think of verse 21 that Jesus says to the first disciples, Peace be with you. Jesus says that to us. Peace be with you. Who wouldn't want peace? We all want peace, don't we? As I still am working, and especially during tax season, there can be a lot of stress during that time. Carol and I usually have a morning prayer time, and Carol always prays for my day to be peaceful, especially during that time. And I can feel that peace during the day when I think of our prayer time. On the night before Jesus died, he knew what he was facing, yet he still took some time to comfort his disciples with the message of peace. In John 14, 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I give to you not as the world gives. Don't be troubled or afraid. How can we live in a world with all the violence, natural disasters, and death, and still be at peace? The kind of peace that Jesus promises and gives is not about living with the absence of trouble. It has nothing to do with our circumstances. It is something that is still with us no matter what happens on the outside. We may be in the midst of terrible troubles and still have the peace Jesus gives. Matthew Henry says, Peace with God, peace in your own conscience, peace with one another. All this peace be with you. Not peace with world, but peace in Christ. Paul said he learned the secret of how to be content in any circumstance, whether being full or hungry, or whether having plenty or being poor. In Philippians 4, 7, Paul talks about the peace of God that exceeds all understanding, that keeps our hearts and minds safe in Jesus Christ. Do you want your heart and mind safe? Remember that peace that Jesus offers has nothing to do with tranquility, harmony, or easy living. Instead, we're told in verse 21 that Jesus said to his disciples, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. So now Jesus is telling the disciples that they're going to go, that they're going to go, have to get out of the barricaded house and go do the very thing that Jesus was arrested for. The only way it that it worked then and now is through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he said, and after he said, peace be with you and the Father, and, and as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. In verse 22, Jesus breathed on the disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. Jesus doesn't ask us to conquer our own fears on our own. He breathes on us the Holy Spirit. Just like God breathed on Adam in Genesis 2, now Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit is the presence of Christ in our lives. This kind of peace is only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't come into the world to merely keep the status quo. He tells us in Matthew 10, 34, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace, but a sword. He tells us to take up our cross Jesus brings peace to the outcasts and the marginalized people back into the fold. He turns the world, he turns the way of the world into the world of the first shall be last and the greatest is the servant. It is through following Jesus that we find true peace. That peace that transcends all understanding. We are all sinners, so we're not capable of following Jesus on our own. 
Sin is simply too much. On our own, we still get caught up into the world, such as social status and to keep our good name and wanting to have privileges. God does understand this. Jesus gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit as believers. This Holy Spirit is Jesus' spirit, which is God's spirit. Just as God breathed into the nostril of the human in Genesis and made it human, so Jesus, having risen from the dead, breathed into the nostrils in the breath of life. When this happens, we become children of God. As the chapter of John says, born not from blood or from human desire or passion, but born from God. In Matthew chapter 5, 9, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are called the children of God. The world peace, the world's peace, thinks in terms of inner peace and what feels good is peace. But the world, but when the world turns its ugly eye into violence, revenge, dropping bombs, we start questioning where God is and how can this happen? There is a correlation between being born of the Spirit and having peace. There is a correlation between having peace and making peace. There is a correlation between following Jesus and having peace. There is a correlation between dying to self and living for God and neighbor and having peace. And there is a correlation between working to fight injustice, loving our enemies, standing up for the oppressed, and having peace which transcends all understanding. As one person has said, Jesus' peace invites the lion to see the lamb as a neighbor and a friend, the Jew to speak to the Samaritan, the prostitute to dine with the Pharisee. This is a new way of living. It's a kingdom's way of living. It's Jesus' way of living. It's the only way to find true peace. In the eyes of the world, it does not make sense. And as Jesus said in 21, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Go in peace, and the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. So now I invite the ushers to come forward. generous God. You are the giver of all good gifts. Thank you for your many gifts. Thank you for Sabbath. Thank you for the kindness and generosity you've shown to us in creation, salvation, resurrection, and our hope for the future. 
Help us to give to others generously out of our Sabbath blessings. Amen. God, help us to not grow weary and lose heart. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Help us to see the joy that comes as a result of faithfulness in the midst of suffering. We should not be surprised by persecution, nor by joy we experience as we suffer for Christ. Go in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.